the Morning X, Barnes, and Leslie. You know, there are a lot of shows that go on that none of us know about. And I can think of some over the years, like in Atlanta even, Black Crows one time played at the Dark Horse. And they played under a different name. A couple of us at the station knew. Tickets got out through a few people. Those things happen all the time. If you can somehow catch a whiff of them, it can be a night that you won't forget. And we have a Morning X listener who did just that. It's so cool when you can go see like your favorite band in a tiny, tiny club or small space. We have uh, Quinn on the phone. Now, Quinn, I've been to the Blue Room at Third Man Records, and so is Barnes. Very cool. But you saw something extraordinary with I don't know, like 150 other people. Tell everybody what you did over the weekend. So, Quinn, before you say who it is, like, yeah. tell us, like, build up some suspense. How did you hear about this show? How did you get to it? Uh, well, thanks for having me on, guys. Of course. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I you know, had to call in a couple of favors. The Blue Room capacity is about, what do you guys want to say, 250, I think, is official it, capacity? Yeah. yeah, if that. It's, yeah. It's tiny. Uh, yeah, and I, I will say I think the real capacity for this show was about three hundred ish. Wow, so it was yeah. sardine time. Yeah, but um, yeah, you know, I had to call Jack White and get a couple favors going, and uh, no, not really. But <laughs> I was um, about to say, damn, dude, you went right to it. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I, I, it's it's rare that you can see a rock and roll hall of fame band inductee um, at a place like that, and it's I just happened to hear about it. How? Yes, I happened to hear about it through the grapevine. Wait, what grapevine? How, how do you hear about something like that? There's kind of a word of mouth thing about the Blue Room, though. You do hear like, oh, somebody's recording there or somebody's playing the Blue Room. I, I do have to drop a few names of people I've seen there before, and this will give you a sense of how I'm able to oh, yeah, yeah. get to this. I've seen Pearl Jam there. What? Um, yes, I've seen Chris Rock there. Um, wow. You have to know where to look, I guess, is what I'm saying. All right. Um, uh, so I was able to, to check out the legendary Pretenders. Dude. And come. Yes. How? That is That crazy. is insane. I can't even imagine seeing the Pretenders in the blue. If people can imagine how tiny this room is. It's at Third Man Records. It's in the back. There's a giant elephant on the wall, too, but uh, an elephant head. <laughs> Here, I'll play. Quinn gave me a couple of tracks. Here, I'm going to play. Is this from your phone, I'm assuming? It is. All right, here's one. Here's a quick clip of uh, Precious. This is to Pretenders. Hall of Fame band in a room for 200. Have a listen. just crazy to me so you're looking yeah, around going that's really the pretenders on this stage yeah Chrissy Hine in the flesh about you know 10 feet away something like that now let me ask yeah. you, I was going to ask you where did you stand because the last time I was in there I actually went to see Jack White after Barnes and I did the interview yeah. he played the next night I stood in the very back of the room were you at the front where were you that, that's a funny story, too. So we got there right around showtime, which was a mistake, because when we opened the door, you know, you go in that little side door, and it was absolutely packed. So there was, the only room was kind of on the side, and I ended up standing. For those who don't know, that room is almost shaped, the walls are shaped like a photo studio. They're curved. And I, I had to stand on the curve of the wall. So my Ooh. cats are just on fire today, you know. Um, but the good news about that was I kind of was able to look over everybody, and I'm kind of tall anyway. And um, Another side note, you know, I, I had to let Jason Isbell and Amanda Shires walk by, you know. <laughs> uh, oh, that's cool. What other, any other celeb sightings? I, I, I did not see anybody else, but I think there were others there. Um, you know, it was kind of like when we saw Pearl Jam there and Keith Urban and Nicole were up in the booth watching, you know, it's just it's kind of... It's one of those places, like a little speakeasy in Nashville, if you will. But um, it was just amazing. When I had to ask you a question because, you know, we know that Jack, when you go to a Jack White show, they take the phones away. How are you able to get this audio? Did they not check phones at the door? 
they did not do the old phone in the in the lock case thing. You could just wow. freely do it, which I think, by the way, is that's a good move by the pretenders. I mean, it's, there are all kinds of buzz coming from that, you know. Of course, because they're about to do a world tour, right? Yeah, and they're releasing an album next week, and they played some of that. It was fantastic. It fit right in with everything else, you know? So, it's great. Man, that is impressive. Now, Barnes, you need to go to a show there. I wanted you to stay in town for that Jack White show at the Blue Room. It, it, it's, it's, I don't know, it's kind of surreal, especially like, you know, when saw Pearl Jam there. I did see another very cool artist there a couple of years ago, Billie Eilish. Damn. Oh, yeah. She did like a pop-up yeah. thing there, and... Yeah, you can follow the Blue Room and Third Man Records on Instagram, but good for you seeing the Pretenders. How long did they play? They played, I, I would say, probably about an 18-song set, so about wow. an hour and a half. Was it a warm-up gig, or what What was the point of the concert? Well, I think what they're doing, they're trying to, they're trying to build buzz again for that album, and they're also playing these little club dates in between opening for the Guns N' Roses. Oh, so, yeah, they're they're using the club baits as test driving some of the newer songs. They're also playing a lot of deep cuts. If you if you went to that show expecting "I'll Stand by You" or "Brass and Pocket," you're not going to get it. It's the club shows are kind of four on the floor. You know, the punk Ooh. version of the Pretender. Wow! So they didn't do any of those big hits. No, the closest thing they came to a, came to a hit was that song you just played, Precious. Precious. You know, their first song on the first album. Yeah. So this was for the Uber fans, the deep cuts. It was. It was indeed. All right. Well, that's cool. I, how many videos did you take before we let you go? I like you used your phone up for how, how many songs did you take? <laughs> I, I try to enjoy the show. You know, there's a delicate balance there. I took three songs: Tattooed Love Boys, Great Deep Cut, and then Boots Chinese Plastic, which is famous from. Uh, it was in Breaking Bad, so everybody was boogie into that one. Well, did, isn't it funny how you mentioned that? I find myself feeling like I'm working at a concert when I start like filming it to show everybody. And then I go, what am I doing? I'm, the whole time, <laughs> it's like I'm at work. Got to stay in the moment. If I was knew what I was going to do this, I would have taken more videos for you guys so you could share them. But <laughs> yeah. you know, it worked. Yeah. Well, you know what? Bounce us. Bounce. I'd say bounce it to Leslie, but then I may never see it. Um, bounce it to me because she's on an Android and that stuff doesn't translate. Bounce me one of those and, and tell me how to tag you and I'll put it on our Instagram so people can see it. Cool story. And I'll end with one of your clips from your phone also. Quinn, thanks for telling the story. Sounds great, you guys. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank Morning you. X listener got to see the pretenders in a room of 200. Very cool. Woo. Barnes and Leslie. 99.